So you've plonked your child on their backside, but you're staying kind of close because you know they're not quite able to sit properly yet, even though you're pretty sure they're meant to. My name is Christian Flutter, and welcome to part two of the Is My Child Normal series. And today we're going to be touching about Is My Child Sitting Normal? So what's so important about sitting? Why is it that we need to be sitting as a part of normal child development? Well, you see, sitting is a bit of a fun one. It's almost like a, like a transitional developmental stage where we're taking all the things we learned at a previous stage and we're starting to get ready for the next more important one of getting up and walking around. But sitting is still very important as well. See, sitting, we take a lot of the stuff that we've learned previously with rolling and just start to do it in a different plane. See, rolling itself is great, so we need to be rolling comfortably to start the process off for sitting. Uh, rolling from our back to our front, we need to activate our legs and move them around a little bit. And when we're in our tummy time, we're lifting our head up and moving our head around in space. But then when it comes to sitting, we're in a completely different plane of plane. So it starts to make us activate things in a different manner. So firstly, we need to have that good core development. That's where all that training with tummy time and rolling has come in. But then we also need to activate particular reflexes to help us in this process. Reflexes such as our head writing reflex, our ocular collar reflex, our vestibular ocular reflex. All of these reflexes are tied in to being able to sit comfortably and easily for a prolonged period of time. So there are actually three stages involved in the learning of the sitting system. So the first stage happens at around five months of age. Now this is when we start to we plonk a baby on their backside and they can adopt a seated position. That seated position, it's actually an automatism. It's like a built-in pre-programmed app into a telephone or a phone. Who says telephone anymore? Anyway, it's, a, it's like a pre-programmed system that lets us know how to do this. It's kind of like swallowing. Nobody ever taught you how to swallow or breathe. They're built into our body. So sitting, it's a built-in automatism that happens at around five-ish months of age. Now, they can't sit by that stage. They're just learning the process. It's only until the second stage of development that we start to see sitting happen independently. Now, that happens around six to seven months of age, and they start to be able to sit independently for just a brief moment before they stick an arm out to help prevent them from falling over. Now by around eight months of age, stage three of sitting has developed and we're able to sit for a prolonged period of time without any interference or any uh, inter... what's the word I'm looking for there? No involvement from anyone else to help them do so. But what is it that helps them maintain this seated position. See, there are things that can actually influence a baby's ability to sit comfortably. Now, when we're first learning to do anything, we need to pay attention to that particular thing we're doing. So if they're not focusing, if they're not able to pay attention to that particular thing, they're going to have a hard time learning how to do it. Think about the first time you learn to ride a bike. If you're not paying attention to what you're doing, you could end up anywhere. So they need to be able to focus their attention on the task at hand. So if they're in an environment that has a lot of distractions, this can actually start to interfere with their ability to comfortably learn how to sit. Now, secondly, they also need to have good feedback from their system. If we don't have proper feedback coming through, we can't tell where our body is in space. Now, this feedback is known as proprioception, and it's a very important aspect of our normal system development and growth. If we can't do this one, we're going to have a hard time being able to maintain our particular positions. Now, what does it mean then if we're not sitting? See, if by around 10 months of age, your child is unable to sit, we need to start looking as to finding reasons why. Now, one of the most common reasons that I see is tone. If we have lowered tone or reduced normal tone, then it's gonna start impacting on our ability to feel what's going on in our system. See, tone is kind of like, if you watch this little thing here, you'll get a very good understanding as to what tone is, but tone is kind of like how tense your muscles are. And we need to have a bit of tension to maintain our positions. But if we don't have that good tone, it makes it easy for us to fall on over. We don't have that capacity to maintain our particular position. 
Now you see, low tone, I do see tie in with a bunch of other conditions. And in fact, that's why we see in kids who are not sitting by around 10 months of age, it actually increases the risk of there being another condition or something else going on. Things like autism or ASD or uh, behavioral issues. Uh, even kids with sitting issues may have issues with language development later on in life. Now, whether that's because of the sitting or because of the decreased amount of tone, that's a very good question for people smarter than myself to discuss with research. But what if it's something else? What if it was something a little bit more straightforward? Could there be some other thing that's going on that's stopping them from being able to sit comfortably? Now, what if you've got a bit of a sore shoulder? If you've got a sore shoulder, do you really feel like sticking your arm out to stop yourself from falling over? Uh, it becomes kind of unpleasant, so they tend not to want to do that. So when they're getting to particular stages, uh, as they're going over, they may not prop their arm out to hold themselves up. Now, this is where the propping reflex can actually come in quite useful. See, we look at propping and parachuting reflexes to help us determine how a child is going with their development. If we're not propping out to the sides by around six months, that could tell me there's something inside that lateral system, maybe in their shoulders or maybe in their balance centers, that isn't activating properly. If we're not sticking our hands out in front of us by around seven months, same thing. And if when we're going backwards, we're not sticking our hands backwards but putting them upwards, this could indicate a bit of a mismatch in some of the signaling coming through from our balance centers as well. See, that one should be activating by around nine months of age. And this is why it's so important that by 10 months of age, they should be able to sit because they've got the capacity built in to be able to do so. Uh, furthermore into that, if you're seeing a bit of an asymmetry, they might be propping out to one side but refusing to do it on the other. This then ties in more strongly that there could be an issue in somewhere in their musculoskeletal system, in which case it may be worthwhile getting your child checked by a healthcare professional like a chiropractor, osteopath, physiotherapist, someone in that musculoskeletal realm to see if there's something that can be done to help. I hope you found this video informative and helpful. Uh, if you've got a child who's not quite hitting that milestone, you're more than welcome to reach out and we'll discuss it privately as well. But otherwise, stay care, stay care, take care, and we'll speak again soon. Bye now.